Hi there. I wish you a good day. Thanks for opting our skill. The best training institute in the market. And I heartily welcome you to the demo demonstration session on Oracle 11 GR2 Rack Real Application Clusters. This session purely covers the contents that the curriculum it has got and we will be going in detail about what are these contents one after the other chapter by chapter and also I'll give you a demo session on one of the activities also so that we understand through this session what will be the quality of the training and what benefits you are going to gain. Anyhow you have been uh, gone through the course details already in our website but this demonstration video will clearly give you even a session on one of the activities so that we clearly understand what is this actually and how does it benefit us and starting with the course contents and uh, the course contents goes with the introduction and as uh, the prerequisites for Oracle 11 GR to rack is nothing but we should have proper and full uh, knowledge and hands-on on standalone or a single instance environment so considering that we will introduce everything about the rack so right from the basics of what is cluster and rack environment we will be covering every detail of what is rack in the first chapter and so that you know and you understand why should we learn rack and what are the basic terminologies that we will use throughout the course and the next thing that we will be covering is grid infrastructure the cluster overview so this cluster we will be covering completely about the grid which covers ASM as well as the cluster where that is why it is named as grid and the next we will do a very very important activity Oracle rack installation and we will be explaining you in detail about and we will be giving you hands on on how to install rack and it will be so simple and straightforward that even you can install it on your laptops or desktops so that is what we actually prefer so that you can practice anytime anywhere that is our motto and the next chapter covers SRV CTL and CRS CTL tools mostly these two tools are for grid infrastructure maintenance and administration activities so these tools you will see only when you install clusterware so we will introduce those tools to you because these are the tools that we will be using going forward for our administration activities in the rack setup and the most important activity is to convert a single instance or a standalone database server to rack so we will be dealing that in detail in this chapter and very importantly we have to understand the background processes which are new in rack setup that is not only on the instance level but also on the clusterware side what are the background processes and what does they do we have to understand as a DBA and few of the administration activities I have covered in the chapter number seven these are very basic administration activities like changing the parameters and managing undo and uh, redo log files management etc etc and then I'll cover most basics about ASM because uh, as we know that rack is best when it when it is combined with ASM so it performs best when it is with ASM so I'll cover every detail on basics of ASM and uh, we will see how does it benefit the rack setup as well next the ninth chapter will cover completely about the global resource management wherein GRD GCS and GES global resource directory global NQ services and global cache services how these three global resources will coordinate with each other and how that uh, how is it enabling a rack setup functional and how all the nodes in the rack setup will be able to communicate with each other using this global resources is what we are going to see in detail next thing is we are going to cover in detail about what are the backup strategies we are going to follow in rack and if there is any recovery or restoration scenario how do we do those restorations also it is not just the concept we will do the activities as well and I have list down few of the other activities because we have been going through a few of the uh, theory parts but at the same time activity is also very important so we will be seeing few of the activities which I have listed here it includes database backups restorations and snapshot uh, enabling snapshots blockchain tracking files etc etc and after that we will see in detail about services high availability services as we know uh, rack is purely a complete structure with the services if there are no proper services in the rack you cannot take the advantage of the rack setup the most advantage is high availability this advantage to make out of rack setup we will have to depend on services so I'll introduce what is service how do we create service and then I'll tell you how these services uh, will be related with the application and how we are 
telling that with the rack setup we are gaining high availability that is what we are going to prove here and next come furthermore administration activities uh, on the cluster side as well as the database side but administration activities too will majorly cover about cluster side activities uh, based on uh, whether it can be on OCR, restoring OCR, performing OCR backups, uh, different kinds of OCR backups and also adding di uh, voting disk, removing voting disk, all these things we will see. 15th chapter is the most important one which covers in detail about performance tuning and monitoring as we all know and we accept that performance tuning is something which is uh, not a standard and a single line approach every time. Depending on the issue, the approach will change. So definitely, uh, this chapter will give you guidance on how do we approach for few of the examples that I will be taking here. But definitely, it will be helping you to think upon acting on a problem whenever there is a performance in the rack. Next comes the major three activities. Uh, the administration activities number three, third section which covers completely about adding a node to the cluster if you are, want to delete a node to the cluster and how do we apply a rolling PSU patch on top of the cluster is what I'll show you and the next thing is ASM storage level administration also we will be dealing that in detail so this is all about the content level what is that we cover in this complete curriculum now let me show you a very simple example how do we actually train you so so that you will get an idea what exactly and how exactly you feel in the training so now I have connected to first node in the setup so I have a two node setup on my system so I have connected there so now it is different on rack how is it different let us see let us do one of the activities of uh, actually running up or bringing down the instance so how do we bring down an instance in a single or a standalone database we will connect to SQL plus we will say SQL plus slash sysdba and we will issue the command called shutdown immediate but in rack no we know that there is one of the instances running called uh, rack db1 and there is another instance called asm1 as I'm I will be using asm along with rack in the complete setup this is what it is now if you ask me what is in node 2 so let me show you what is there in node 2 and this is my rack 2 which is running already so login as oracle user and then see here what are the background processes and uh, you will understand what is it so I have the clustered ASM instance running with ASM2 and clustered database instances RackDB2 now the beauty of this rack setup is if you want to see the status of the databases completely in the environment whether it is 2 node rack or a 3 node rack or a 4 node rack you can use the tool called SRVCTL status database hyphen D RackDB and hyphen V. V is in verbose that means you will get in detail about that. So it is saying that for the database called RackDB there are two instances. Instance 1 is running on Rack1. Instance 2 is running on the node called Rack2. Both these instances are in open state at the moment. So you can control bringing up the instance or bringing down the instance on any of the nodes in the cluster from one node. I'm on node 1 now if I have to bring down the database instance on node 2 I can issue again SRVCTL command line tool I can say stop instance hyphen D rag DB and hyphen I I'll say go and stop instance name rag DB 2 now once this will be successful and it will come back to the command prompt I will show you on the rack 2 that my database will be down it will be shut down why because I have issued stop the instance command from rack 1 so what is the benefit of this tool SRVCTL tool you can control the complete database instances from any place or any command line in the setup so not only on node 1 you can control if you have 4 node rack on the 4th node from the 4th node you can control all the instances so now if you see the same command see rack db2 is gone because I have shut down that from this command line so that's where I'm saying so cluster is completely an integrated system wherein you can control administer and perform the activities on another nodes right from the first node what are the different activities we will come to know throughout the course this is one of the examples and the next example is similarly uh, we know that now to bring up the instance you can do it from here itself so SRVCTL start instance hyphen D hyphen I 
Now it will bring up the instance from this node. And it will follow the same process as standalone database will follow. What was that? Uh, start the instance, mount the database, open the database. The same steps will be followed, but administration will be little different when it comes to rack. Now if you check the conditions or the status of it, so rack database 2 has come up. Similarly, not only instance can be controlled on the command line at any one of the nodes. Along with that, you can control listeners, you can control ASM instance, you can control the complete clusterware itself. So if you want to check the status of the complete clusterware on the local node as well as on all the other nodes as well, the command is crsctl status resource hyphen t. And if you see this, this will only work when you set the environment variables of your clusterware. So ASM is ASM and clusterware both comes together in 11.203 software. That's why set the environment variables of ASM and then run this command. You will be able to see the status of cluster resources on all the nodes at one place. So see here. Now you can see that. Yes, it's beautiful. It's a two node rack. Your disk groups are online on both the nodes. These are three different disk groups. Your local listeners are online on both the nodes. Your ASM instance is online on both the nodes. GST will be offline. It is not required in, uh, in this 11G software or earlier to that in 10G as well. And your network components are online on both the nodes. Your ONS Oracle notification service is also online on both the nodes. Scan listeners, because I'm using 11G R2, scan comes into picture. So I'm using three scan listeners. They are online on all the nodes, respective nodes. Cluster verification utility is online on one of the nodes. And uh, OC4J, which is for Java, so it is also on uh, it is also online on one of the nodes and VIP addresses online. Rack DB, this is a database which has two instances and two instances status are open. And similarly, scan VIP is also online. So this is what and this is how the training methodology would be. And this example will show you that I'll be clearly showing you everything in reality using putty sessions. And we are not going to use enterprise manager. It is not just because that enterprise manager uh, will simplify the job but when you are learning something you should learn something which is difficult then simplified jobs will come on the flow you, you will not be requiring too much guidance when you completely know what is the process flow on the command line so that's how it will be and the benefit is what I'll be showing you now so whatever we have been now typing here so what is that I'll be doing is uh, so let me shut down my systems because uh, this demo is done anyway and I'll shut down this one as well and I'll be showing you what is that you will gain along with this so definitely I'll be showing something in reality just like this and along with that you will get the log files which I have recorded just like this each and every command that I have typed on my putty log that putty log session has been captured and you will get all the commands that I have typed on my command line in putty session, whether it is on rack one or whether it is on rack two. You will get these log files and you can ask me why these log files are required. Definitely, this will be a point of reference for you. How was the approach that I have uh, opted to showcase some activity? So these log files will be definitely helpful, whether to record the commands that I have used or the process that I have followed to perform an activity, definitely you can get it from these log files. And what is the next benefit that you get? All the sessions and all the topics or all the courses that you take from us will have proper documentation. So this is the course content that we have gone through so far, but to showcase you, the concepts, diagrams, and the theory part, even the activities of installing it, let me show you. So the, where, the, where does the installation begin? After the concept introduction, this is where installation begins. So even the installation, what commands has been followed at every stage and how did we gain the complete installation? Everything will be documented and this document will be shared to you. So this is the second benefit that you get. What is the first benefit? The log files of each and every session. The second benefit is the complete documentation of the course. And the third benefit is each and every session will be recorded like this. As you can see, these are the recorded sessions already and you will get these recorded sessions every day, a link to your email so that you can play them online. So the benefit is if you did not get anything in the course, you can definitely have the next chance to review whatever I have spoken in the class. 
so that means you you can never miss even a single point that i have spoke in the daily session so this is the third benefit that you get and the other benefits which you already know by this time is we cover purely real time courses and you will get really a hands on experience because we will give you an opportunity or we will show you an opportunity or the method to set up completely whatever environment will be there in real time on your local machines so that you can perform all the activities on your own on your local machines so thanks for uh, going through my demo session and hope this demo session is very helpful to you and we are waiting for your uh, confirmation to join the course and to reach us these are the different ways that you can find us this is our contact number this is the email and uh, the, you can whatsapp us as well to get a uh, faster response and to follow us on facebook this is our page and this is the twitter account and this is the youtube channel from where you can see some of the benefit uh, some of the good videos which have which we have already uploaded and to find us on linkedin this is the page and as you can see here we are always there on www.artskill.com and we will be uploading a regular blogs so that it will be helpful to the dbas and also sap administrators and the other uh, java and other domains also so we maintain the quality that is how that is what we tried to showcase in this demonstration thanks for hearing to us and again have a good day